Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live on our Patreon channel. And uh, boy, I tell you what, the video I did on YouTube, Israeli News Live, I, I really butchered that message. Oh my gosh, I had so many flaws that happened. And, I, and really what I was trying to do was to be able to share with people the important information that we put here on Patreon. And uh, of course, it comes over time. And uh, Mike from around the world on uh, Paul's program, uh, and even on his own program, he brings out a lot of information. And but it's a lot of that information are things that we've shared even you know a little bit earlier on. And uh, Mike is very very gifted at what he does. Uh, you know, he's a very very intelligent man. And I mean, there are things that I disagree with him on when it comes to Israel and the support of the state of Israel. Um, not against the support of the Jewish people, mind you, but uh, uh, it is, you know, and, and, and of course, I sometimes I get accused of being anti-Semitic. Well, I also come from a Jewish background, so I'm not anti-Semitic. I am wanting to expose those that are saying they're Jews or not and are trying to run the nation right into the ground uh, all on the pretense that this is some kind of a godly thing that's going on. Uh, so we've proven scripturally time and time again, there are no lost tribes. There at least uh, back 2,000 years ago, clearly New Testament passage proves all 12 tribes of Israel were home. Acts chapter 2, etc. So these were things that I had to wake up to as well. So I don't fault people uh, not really recognizing that. Same thing with uh, uh, Paul Begley. I realize uh, he is very much pro-Zionist. And uh, so a lot of the things that they share are going to be very pro-Zionist, not recognizing and not standing with the true believers, uh, the Jewish believers that are in Israel right now that are in danger from this right-wing government and the things that are happening uh, over there. But that's really not what we're going to get into today. Uh, you know, there, there are things, there are a lot of things that Mike is speaking about that, uh, that we have brought out ourselves here on Patreon for you. And because of this one video that he did here, um, I like to bring it out. And it's not to say who's first, who's second. It has nothing to do with that. It is because what he's bringing out corroborates information I've already shared with you. And, uh, and it also kind of helps me to dig a little deeper as well. In fact, I would love to be able to interview Mike for that very purpose. Uh, between the two of us there, uh, I'm sure it would really bring a lot of information out of me as well. Um, because it would just cause me to remember a lot of things. So anyway... Uh, pardon the, all the background noise. I got a dog dreaming on the chair over there. I got the ducks outside the door and a cat in another chair there. So uh, there is no telling what all we're going to hear today. Uh, but hopefully we can get past all that. Uh, and I think that this time around I've got everything laid out the way I wanted to. But it's gonna, we're going to be taking some of these videos that I'm going to share with you that I've done in the past on some of the things that Mike is talking about. Plus I'll, I'll kind of elaborate on this too. Um, is a lot of it was on Patreon, some of it was on Israeli News Live, some on iConnect. Uh, but uh, it is for those of you, if we do share this video on Israeli News Live later, uh, it's just to let you know our Patreon viewers are normally the ones that I share this type of information with because there's so many people that are so critical on Israeli News Live about. Uh, when you begin to talk about entities and things like that, whereas on Patreon, the people that are here sit, tend, tend to be a little bit more open-minded and they're a little bit more accepting of these type of things. Uh, I am going to follow this up, though, with a biblical teaching. I, I'm really wanting to go very deep into this because it is biblical. The things that I'm sharing with you are, is very biblical. And uh, but I think what happens is because of the way it was written in the Bible and the way they allowed things to come out, um, you really have to look deep at to what, what, what writings are there, especially if it's Paul or, or Jesus or anybody else. Um, people normally just take it, oh, that's spiritual, you know, uh, it's a lot deeper than spiritual. Uh, we are really fighting a war. And that war is about to get much worse. And I'm going to share that in a biblical teaching that will actually be airing on Israeli News Live, uh, possibly doing an institute as well, and iConnectFX.com. Uh, 
Uh, do be sure you are subscribed though to our YouTube channel. Uh, just since yesterday, I watched the numbers start declining very rapidly. YouTube is censoring us. Uh, I know this on a number of levels there that we are hacked. Uh, our, my phones are tapped. My house is bugged. You name it. Uh, so we can just say greetings to all those out there, CIA, NSA, whoever else is out there listening and watching us, Mossad, Israeli Mossad, etc. Um, you know, as I've said to you before, we've been targeted. And, uh, and more and more of that will come out very, very soon. In fact, probably going to come out a heck of a lot sooner than what you realize. And you may even be seeing it on uh, mainstream news in very, very soon um, about a lot of things that are going on. It's one reason why I'm not saying too, too much as of yet. Anyway, let's get started here. This is at the 36, uh, 26 minute mark. This is on Daily Excellent where, where Anthony posts some of these uh, interviews as well. Uh, Mike is going, uh, Mike is, uh, let's see, planet traveling. Well, let's just see in the, okay, this is where Mike is. Uh, Paul, Paul had asked him earlier, the question I asked him to, to speak up to him about, is Planet X traveling in the ether? Uh, Paul doesn't exactly say it right, but it's okay. Still gets the point. Now, Mike comes back to that a little later in the video, about 10 minutes earlier, he asked him about it, but he doesn't answer it at first because Paul goes into a whole lot of other questions at the same time. Uh, and then he comes back and answers it here. And he's going to answer it in a very bizarre way. Um, but I definitely understood his answer. And so I'm going to elaborate on that plus play a clip for you about where I talk about this as well. Listen in. That question you asked me at first, is there, you know, is, is the uh, is Planet X... Uh traveling would you say with on the ether? ether yeah with the ether well, well, let, let me explain something though okay within a one foot by one foot cube of matter there's enough power right in the everywhere there's enough power to run everything on earth for 150 years <laughs> that's what's in what people call the ether okay that's what cern is extracting right that's what they're tampering that's what they're toying with they're pulling things out of another dimension and they're absolutely going to, uh, they're going to go in there. They're going to, they, they peered in there. And in fact, they first peered in there in the 50s. Uh, they're going to go in there what? in a different way this time again. I had a guy and, and here. CERN, CERN is a completion of a project that began in the 50s. Mike, I had. A All right. Now, um, you know what, I, I think what I'll do is I'll play a little bit more because now Paul's going to talk about a guy that was some type of scientist that visited where, where he was speaking at. So I, maybe I should play that as well. I want you to pay attention, though, uh, where he said they're going to go in there. Okay? They're going to go in there. Uh he talks about the power that's generated from one cubic square of the ether. Okay, so um, let me see. Let me see if I, maybe I should play a little bit more because the other thing that Paul says here is kind of interesting. Let me see if I can play. I'm a scientist here. I'm in Branson, Missouri tonight because I preached here last night and was on a couple television shows with Jim Baker. And, uh, and Israel is going to be doing praise and worship tomorrow night here in Branson for Pastor Carl Gallup. So he'll be preaching tomorrow night. Well, anyway, long story short, after I got done preaching last night on the Beast Kingdom Rising, uh, it was a good crowd here, too. Uh, a man came up to me and at the end and said, you don't know me. He said, but I am a scientist. I have, I'm, an, I'm a molecular scientist. But he said, I know a lot of my, a lot of my friends are physicists and scientists uh and some of my friends have worked for cern and some are still working at cern so he said i'd like to share one thing with you and i said okay sir he said they are 1 64th of an inch from piercing the veil and he said and i said what he goes i'm i'm talking met metaphorically what i'm trying to tell you is they know how to do it they want to do it. They're afraid of what's on the other side. And they're trying to communicate with what's on the other yes, side to get permission to do it because they're afraid of what is waiting for them. I would say had examples. All right, we're going to pause it just for a moment here. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to elaborate on this quite a bit here in just a moment. But before I do, 
I want to take you here. This is November the 8th, 2022, uh, video that I did here. And it's only where I speak about um, a couple of things that I speak about on here about uh, this is, of course, Planet X Nibiru may be closer than you know. Uh, this was a video, of course, that we posted on Israeli News Live. Uh, I don't think this was actually on uh, Patreon. This was one of the few times where I decided to come out and really share some deeper things. Let's listen into this one here as well. Make sure the volume's up. Here we go. You guys, I wanted to share that with you uh, too in light of the information I'm going to be speaking about. Now, everything I've ever been told about Planet X is that in order to see it, unless it's close enough to our sun where it can reflect the light of our sun, uh, you have to have infrared technology to be able to photograph it. And one of the latest things that was shared with me is that the planet had kind of disappeared off of radar. It's been a couple of years since we've had our last infrared uh, images of this planet. And that's because, as I've told you before, Planet X travels in the ether. It's actually going in between one dimension and another dimension back and forth. And we've talked about this for quite a couple, well, two or three years now. I've actually spoke to you about that and how that works. Um, but the concern right now, and this subject came up uh, at a meeting in Washington recently, is that because it's kind of disappeared into the ether, is could it have actually well, let me put it this way here. I wasn't told that it slipped into a wormhole, but I have been told and I have shared with you before here that there are certain uh, extraterrestrial entities that use wormholes in order to be able to travel much faster from one part of the universe to the other. For example, I shared with you on Patreon, our channel there, patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live, that wormholes are one way that one group of entities that live 10 year light years away from us can actually get here uh, pretty much in about 30 days. Uh, that's the way they travel. They hit the worm, wormholes and it's almost like it projects them forward in time or even though I know that everything I've been told, we don't necessarily know that there is time travel, that it exists, but there are some elements that suggest that it could exist. And wormholes are one of those particular uh, ideologies for that. And like, for example, if you look at the AndersonInstitute.com, they deal with time control and time travel. And specifically, I'm going to be sharing with you uh, this wormhole theory. And now, how fixing that to be works speaking here in about website. another 30 seconds time, about NASA that kind of energy that is that's in the real. Ever since the sound of the barrier was broken, people have turned their attention to how can we break the light speed barrier, but warp drive or any other term for faster than light travel still remains at the level of speculation. Well, the thing is, though, is, is it really that they can travel that fast or is it not that but like a shortcut? That's what I kind of wonder myself. So since the 1930s, this is from the Anderson Institute's website, physicists have speculated about the existence of wormholes in the fabric of space. Wormholes are hypothetical areas of warped space-time with great energy that can create tunnels through the space-time. It, it tr uh, let me. So that's where the energy comes from is through the ether uh, created through that wormhole. It's one of the things that they had discovered. Uh, there's also pyramid uh, energy as well. Another thing that is uh, used, in fact. Uh, once uh, you can, if you can see beyond the, the, what we call the veil, no, we're not talking about the ether in this case here, just the magnetosphere that kind of hinders our view of space. I mean, we see a lot of space, but we don't see everything. And because of our different atmospheres that make up this planet, it does kind of distort that view. And we do have planets that are very near to us that are, that are also, they have electricity on them. They are civilizations of entities that live there. And we know they use pyramid technology. Um, but uh, the thing is that I was looking at when I was bringing these things out where, where, um, where, where uh, Mike is speaking about that energy and that uh, they know that in one cubic uh, foot of, of the ether, there's more energy that could power the earth, I guess, for a year, he says, on there. And they're wanting to tap into that. 
And then Paul comes up and he's talking about this guy, this molecular scientist he met, and he's talking about they're afraid they could they could do this, they could pierce that, but they're afraid about what's on the other side. Well, that's there are a group of scientists that are very limited in their knowledge and very limited in knowing on what really goes on. Uh, but when you get into the aspects of DARPA, the CIA, and, and the intelligence communities that actually control a lot of this information and behind the scenes or the secret space program uh, that we have, no, we definitely have already pierced the veil. We have already gone across. And Mike does speak about some of that on there. That's one of the reasons why it'd be really fascinating to sit down with him in an interview uh, and talk to him about these things because of the things that I'm aware of myself. And then, of course, his knowledge of that. Uh, I think he's probably had more firsthand experience. Mine is, of course, secondhand uh, uh, and sometimes thirdhand, depending on how that information comes down. And I have multiple sources. Uh, I have Israeli contacts as well that are deep into that type of uh, knowledge. Uh, that is through a secondhand source on that information as well as uh, uh, other intelligence fields that I have is uh, here in the U.S. So, so I pull from the different spectrums there of that technology and that information to be able to share it with you guys. Uh, let's move down a little further though. Let's go to 3830 uh, on his uh, video there. And maybe, oh, we're actually already there. So let me just play that. See, uh, Paul says, what's on the other side? Mike, they have they have, uh, they have, have had examples. That's what we're going to play there because Mike's going to talk about they've already had examples. And then, uh, and then uh, in 3930, he's going to say uh, CERN is tampering with time. And then Mike goes into the thoughts. Most of our thoughts are external. Now, one of my teachings that I'm going to be doing here this evening after I finish this video is going to be dealing with that uh, because I, I am very concerned uh, that especially as the demonic forces that are running our governments and stuff and them trying to open up these veils and bring these entities in, we're about to be bombarded like never before. So this when I'm playing this information for you here, this is not haphazard. This really, I feel, is important for you to understand the technology side of this. And then we're going to go into the biblical aspect of this too, uh, so that you are really prepared. As Paul said, putting on the full armor of God. This is not just some kind of uh, metaphoric thing that Paul is talking about. You're in for a ride, and we're in for a ride that you ain't never been on before. And I want you to be ready. So let's listen a little bit more here. They've had examples. They know what happens when you tamper with exotic materials, when you're tampering with forces they shouldn't tamper with. When they back engineer things that have been left here for a long time, they know exactly what happens. They know the horror stories behind it. And it's not the attractive UFO picture everybody would want to have covered. No. But let's go ahead and face it. Uh, there are things on this earth that are better left alone. But yes. mankind did not leave them alone. They've nope. had advantages from it, yes. But it has cost uh, uh, a lot of lives. CERN ultimately uh, will... It, it's, 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 CERN tampers with time. CERN tampers with time. With time, you really? with dimensions. Really? You, you're going to tamper with... You can't... Well, let me, let me just say, though, why he's saying that about it tampers with time is because, like I mentioned to you from the other video there... Uh, CERN opens up. It can open up a wormhole. It can literally open up the ether, go from one side to the other. Uh, it manipulates time. We know that uh, through CERN, we've already discovered at least seven other dimensions. Now, that's at least what I've been made privy to. No telling what else out there exists. And the next two dimensions beyond this, we have Earth just like our Earth, same exact solar system, everything you can see, but it is in a different time warp, a different time period. One of those planets are in the 50s. Now, Mike talks about, and I've shared this with you guys before, he talks about we've lost people. Uh, we have. We've actually sent people over to these other dimensions where these other Earths are, and we have trackers on them. We know they're there. We have not lost the ability of that they're there, but we can't get them back. So imagine that. Uh, <laughs> a lot could be said on these things. Okay, let's listen more. And, uh, you can't tamper with a dimension without tampering with time. And so if you tamper with time where people are conscious, you're going to have a melding of, of almost like the dream world, uh, hell's world, and this world, yes, yes, all one there time, you go. and this will be beyond a person's um, 
it will or it doesn't matter if a person wants that to happen or not. They'll be, in, they'll be subject to it, prone to it. So voices, for example, if, if people would just, just stop for a second. Now, I want you to notice though where Mike says, is you're not going to be able to do anything about it. And we have more than one type of way that, that scientists are tampering with the other side. CERN is one way. CERN is opening a port, portal, a gateway. Uh, it is opening um, an avenue of demonic entities that, as I've said before, uh, this is what this is how I think they're going to bring Planet X in. Uh, as we were talking about, I think is over in the Book of Revelation last night, uh, where when that bot when that pit is open uh, and the smoke and everything rose out of it, very similar to that of what you have in the Colbrin. Uh, and again, as I said, they call it a Bible, but uh, listen, don't take it as a Bible. But if you want to look at it from a historic point of view, this is where you read about the passing of Planet X in the past and also what's anticipated in the future. And then when you look at the book of Revelation, oh my gosh, it's very similar, very scary, in fact, the way it looks when you're reading that. Uh, now, but as I said, though, uh, he's going to he's talking about these entities and things that, you know, uh, that it's going to open up the minds to the dream world, like a dream world. But you're going into a demonic world. Yes. Very, very true. Uh, and I'm going to share with you here some of the information that I did as well, um, like what prompted the building of CERN. Uh, wait a minute, extracting energy. All right. Let's, in fact, before we get too far into this, let me take you to one of the videos that I did. Um, let's see, CERN and extracting energy. Um, let me see. I think it's what prompted the building of CERN. Wait a minute. Let me just make sure I get the right video. Um, okay. What prompted the building of CERN? Here we go at 120 and we're already close enough there. All right, this is actually, though, where I talk about, all right, because if you remember, all right, let, let's, let's just back up. Before I get into the to the spirits, one of the things he said at the beginning of this clip we were playing is that they've already, um, they've already tapped in and had experiences. So let me play that for you. This is one of those ones where that happened uh, in the video, what prompted the building of CERN? This was a Patreon video that we had that aired. Idea of what they were actually dealing with. Uh, there was actually a device that was discovered uh, in the Middle East there, and it's that device that they took uh, to the underground facility, which is about 27 stories underground. 27 stories under in an underground bunker there uh, where this device was taken to, where scientists were studying it, trying to figure it out, etc. And so I'm going to take you, like I said, really on the inside of a convert, the conversations that we have, so you can kind of get a better idea of what, what, what I actually get to hear myself. So anyway, he says that the movie Stargate is predicated on an event in Colorado, and there are several mountains there with different types of bunkers, including... Uh, for nuclear war, et cetera. And another bunker was for scientific analysis. And there was, there's where the device uh, that they had discovered in the Middle East, the device uh, was actually housed in that facility, 27 stories underground. And I was told that the device um, it was like, it was like a, uh, had like puzzle pieces around the perimeter of the circumference. And depending on the sequence, you rotated the inner ring uh, to match the outer ring. And depending on the sequence you used to match the outer ring to align the puzzle up, it would have a certain reaction. Most of the time, the scientists had no results. But if you hit the right sequence, it would create some sort of a wormhole. But it wasn't a wormhole like the movie. Uh, similar to a wormhole, like, excuse me, or, but similar to a door or a portal that CERN can open. The scientists believe that the different sequences. Now, if you notice, it's a door similar to that of what CERN can open. 
All right. Like I said, they already know how to do it with CERN, and we've already done it. With, you know, in the in one video I spoke about how that uh, we had an evil entity that literally came back, and 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 the, granted, when I say the entity came back and it was CERN that did it, we never discussed which hadron collider we used to do that. So whether or not it was truly the one there in France. Uh, or, or Switzerland, I should say, uh, that goes underneath France, etc. cetera, there. Uh, I, I don't know. I just know that two scientists were killed as a result. And, of course, they'll never make that public of what happens. But, like I said, we have uh, six of these that I'm aware of. And so, and who knows, they could probably have more. I, I just don't know the answer to all of that. But they opened up this wormhole, and to save time, uh, what happened is while they were sitting in there one day, they got a call coming in. And they had to make a decision whether to answer it or not. I, I spoke about this yesterday. And this giant worm about the size of a human being come through when they answered the call. And he began to kill the scientists, the Marines that we have down there in the base there. They ended up killing this creature. Uh, and we've had, we've had another situation like that. And I brought that out on Patreon a long time ago. I forget what it was. Another situation where we had an entity come in. Uh, they ended up pumping, took 27 concrete trucks uh, to pump enough concrete down into the, uh, I think this was the one in, in Colorado, uh, where they had to block the entire section off down there because they were afraid of this entity getting out. Uh, you know, there's some crazy stuff that goes on, you know. So, yeah, when Mike talks about we've had experiences, we definitely have had some really, really bizarre experiences there. Uh, so, at any rate there, let's see here. Um, yeah, the, I'll go ahead and play it for you, though. This was where the two scientists were killed. Uh, this is on the two scientists right here at the 155 mark here. Let me play that there because we're going to get back here in just a moment here. Uh, back in June 20, 2021, and uh, this one still, I've never made this one public. It's still there on Patreon. It's still considered unlisted there, but I'll play it for you here a little bit. It is made public about their deaths. The, the thing is, is will they ever tell you really, really what caused it? Now, what I find very interesting about this particular subject is that I also uh, discovered too that the scientists have noticed a uptick in what is being termed to me as demonic possession. possession, possession. Uh, the scientists that are speaking about these things don't like to use the word demonic. They prefer to say that it is some type of high energy of some sort that is taken. Now, if you notice, this is also going in line with what Mike was saying on there that, uh, that it's like the dream world, but it's not really a dream world. It's a very demonic world there, okay? So, the, and this here, this is dealing with CERN, but we're also going to be dealing with inner earth demonic entities as well. And I'm going to share that with you in just a moment too. Like I said, there's two different, two different directions that we're being bombarded with this. Listen in. Taking control of people and doing it at a very easily, uh, or uh, doing it with ease, I should say. And that's very disturbing uh, I was told as a result of this that the scientists in the U.S. government believe that there is going to be a tremendous uptick in the number of criminal offenses that are going on, that there will be a massive increase in <clears throat> robberies, murders, rapes, you name it, because of these, well, as it was told to me, demonic influences that are so easily taking control of the people. You know, I've stated to you guys many times before, as we read what Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, That's right. but against principalities and power, spiritual wickedness and high places. There you go. There you go. Right. OK, now. So actually, I know this. I do talk about the two scientists that die in here. But on that one there, I really I remember now it was mainly because of what Mike had said on on the video he did there. Now, let me go back. Let's continue on a little bit further. In fact, the next spot is going to be in 30 seconds anyway. Uh, and then we're going to go into another video where I spoke about this. And then I'm going to uh, and then we've got one more part here. I want to still bring out for you as well and we'll kind of elaborate as we go here. Listen in and think about something every time. An issue goes wrong in their lives. Instantly, something starts speaking to their minds. 
it's almost like their mind becomes a table and sometimes things will suggest that you do something this way or that you do something the other way and it's almost like a person will begin to listen to their thoughts you know in the bible it says take captive your thoughts so the bible gives us a hint that not everything you think about is your thoughts as most of the thoughts that we have are external all one yes. need to do is analyze at CERN, when they start think of the scripture where the bible says a man thinketh in his heart so is he there's a reason why the word of god says that what's in your heart what you think with your heart is what is you what you think with your head may not be you your head is uh, is a is a receiver and transmitter uh, and it can receive external uh, thoughts and things whereas your heart it's different um, in fact when jesus gives the parable about the seed and when it falls on the stone and and and, and falls on the the the, uh, the the thorns and amongst thorns etc uh, then he talks about it falling into good soil he said but each time he talks about the heart each time as well, you know, they received it gladly for a little bit in their heart. But, you know, then the Satan comes and takes it away. Um, there is very deep, deep understanding in that parable that Jesus says. But a lot of people never really truly understand what Jesus says about that. Uh, and that that's whoa. The better we can understand the words that the apostles and Jesus said and the prophets spoke about, I tell you what, if you really could start to grasp the truth of it and really dig deep into this, you'll then you'll begin to know how that armor of God needs to be worn. Uh, you know, I mean, it does you no know good to be dressed up like a soldier if you don't know how to use the instruments of war that you have to have for a battle out there? Uh, same thing like when I did the video about intrusive thoughts, you know. People are being bombarded with thoughts, just like Mike is saying. These thoughts are just coming to you, and you have no idea. You know, probably 90% of the thoughts that come to your head are not even you. Think about that. Think about it. All right, let's continue on a little bit further. Tampering with pulling out antimatter and things like that, trying to produce this. The same effect hits everybody. They have, they cannot act upon their thoughts. They have to really be sober. In fact, there is a drug that people take at that laboratory if it becomes too much. And it, it's somewhat like a tranquilizer because what normally happens is a person can be overwhelmed by thoughts, by suggestions, by... It's almost like having a dream but being awake at the same time, right? Yeah. So then the line between reality and the dream world becomes blurred, unfortunately. It's not a dream world. That's a spiritual world, yes. right? That's wrapped wow. around this planet because they know, and when they talk about the Baal pass ball, it is literally thin. Yeah. It's thinner than a human hair. And it's wrapped around all things that have life, which means right now between you and I, another dimension does exist full of entities ready to get at us, right? The only thing holding that back is what God has placed over us. Evil can pierce that veil. Right? Sheer evil. Why do you think they paid Alistair Crowley? Why do you think they paid all these? I'll pause it there again before we go into the next part of this video here, which we'll do here in just a moment here. Um, but let me just clarify in, in saying that, um, like I said, there's more than one way that this actually works. And, uh, and that's what I want you to understand. I, I'm, I'm learning myself, you know, the, the dimensions around us, the ether that separates other dimensions is one way. But then there are also entities that are, that are within the earth itself. The fallen angels are in prison, literally in prison inside the inner earth. Uh, if you ever see the video I did on Antarctica and the fallen angels in prison there, over a million views there. Uh, and I've done a couple of videos uh, since then going deeper into that subject. I really need to create a playlist, I guess, just on that issue alone. Um, I'm not very good at creating these playlists, and I probably should have more because there's so much information. When I go back to look for it, I can't find it because I can't remember how I titled it. Uh, but anyway, let me play this one here in light of what uh, Mike is saying here. 
and uh, and I've got it at six minute mark roughly. This we're close enough to that there, and this is going to be one of the uh, meetings that I that I was a priv privy to, uh, where we were talking about the inner Earth and fracking. And, and by the way, yesterday when I was, where Mike talks about the earth cracking open and the oceans and the water that is within there and stuff like that, I actually speak about that on this video here as well back in September 29th of 2021. Uh, you'll hear that as we go on there. But if you just remember that from yesterday, this is one of the videos that would have answered that. Let's listen. Lazarus does make it. But there's this gulf, this body of water that's between the two. And... Uh, we don't, it doesn't ever say it's a gulf of fire. I know some people might have the idea that it's a gulf of fire, but it's not. It's actually a body of water. Now, from many of the reports and, and, the, and the things that I have set in on before, I know that in the center of the earth, there is a huge ocean there. And uh, just like the oceans that we have on our earth here, there are oceans inside the earth as well. Uh, and actually in more in depth than what our own oceans are. And that ocean, that water separates from the center of the earth to our side here. And if you go deep enough, you can actually hit that ocean. And we've actually done that before uh, in, in doing a drill operation off the coast of, uh, out of the Pacific Ocean, off the coast of California, which actually allowed a prehistoric creature to enter into this side of the earth there. But listen to the report here, what they said here. I thought, by the way, that uh, what, they're t what, what I was talking about there, that's the movie Underwater that came out, I think, in 2020, uh, where there was a creature that was brought through. I brought that out before. Uh, I think I did share that publicly. It was on Patreon as well. But um, that creature there was like a Godzilla type of creature. That happened, I want to say, either. I think in, when I did the video originally, I was thinking it was in the uh, 1990s could have been in the 1980s there uh, and there and I did a subsequent another video about it because there was another guy that actually did bring out the information on that as well uh, after I'd put, put the video out and just which just corroborated the information that I was sharing to be true of course I knew the entire story how we killed the creature etc uh, but that that thing came through because we pierced the ocean in there with, with that drill down in there uh, now, there is, uh, there has been some suggestion that it was because there is an interconnecting uh, underwater cave that went from that side to the other that was near that oil rig that was put out there. Uh, but the way it was explained to me is that we actually created that opening as a result of that. Uh, don't really know which one was the correct one, but we'll continue on to listen to this just for a second so you can hear a little bit more of what I was going to say on this. I thought it was very interesting in, in light of that information, especially in light of the biblical passage right here. So the CIA believes that there that water serves as a barrier and that it serves as a containment method for those evil entities that are within the earth. And also for those the spirits of the dead that can't seem to get back over on this side here. Uh, because they know, like I said, they know that there's that huge body of water that separates between this side and that side there. Uh, but the CIA has noted, however, th this huge increase in demonic energy or spirits are coming up on the earth. And oddly enough, they have linked fracking uh, to the uh, opening for these demonic spirits to be released. Fracking. And that kind of blew me away that uh, they actually believe that fracking is opening up the portals. And why would fracking do that? Because it is, it's punching a hole through to the center of the earth there. And they believe as far as the demons, at least, they're able to come through as a result of that. Uh, and out of the out west, we have, according to what I was told here in the briefing, some 50,000 fracking wells. And even though we supposedly stopped using nuclear weapons to frack, it is a lie. We continue that same process. I want to play for you a little clip here. This is, a, uh, of course, a very... No, I have to really play the clip there. It's where they're talking about the fracking. And, and I have been told that, yes, they still use nuclear devices to do the fracking. Um, and now I don't quite understand how that works, but they have... They seem to link that out west we're having more of an increase of these uh, these entities that are entering into people. 
And like I said, they've, they've, you know, the scientists have created devices where they can see the movement of that type of energy and stuff. They call it energy. Uh, Christians that, that, are, that, that are aware of this call it evil spirits. And of course, the uptick in crime and things like that, they, they kind of think, seem to think it's linked to this fracking. And as like I said, they believe that the water is some sort of containment uh, of that. And I just happened to pull the scripture up because I remembered, you know, in the New Testament where, you know, the gulf that was fixed between that they could not pass and we cannot pass, etc. Things like that. So I found that kind of interesting. Now, whether or not that's exactly right or if their if their uh, hypothesis on uh, evil entities are coming up through as a result of fracking or whatever, I don't know the answer to that. I, I really don't. Um, but the thing is, I find it noteworthy, though, just the fact that, that, it, that, we, that it's spoken about on there. Uh, let me go ahead and go to this other one here. Uh, oops, sorry, wrong video. Let me go back over here to where Mike is speaking here. We'll go to the 43-minute mark. Mike says, Angels has the key and knows who wants out. He's talking about, they're talking about the book of Revelation now. Uh, and because Paul brings that up there about, uh, you know, uh, Apollyon, uh, Abaddon, etc., that wants out of that bottomless pit. And this is where I really take issue about the ether. And this is why I wanted Paul to ask him the question about the ether. So, Mike, if you happen to ever listen to this video here, uh, my question was because of the ether and CERN opening up that portal is, is that we're going to bring Satan in using our own technology. Listen into this here. Well, let's hope it plays. Hmm. Don't know why. Give me one second here for some reason. We're not getting a volume this time around. Let me may have to restart it up. Yep. Let's go back to the 43. Shouldn't take but a second here. Let's listen in. It's released from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit to open this portal into the abyss, into the darkness. Mm -hmm. And you just got to wonder. It's that crazy place. Well, because that's why Shiva is, is, is out there because the scientists from India that put Shiva out there is because Shiva is the god of the the destroyer of the underworld. Uh, it's like the god of the underworld. And and so are they, they're they trying to unlock the veil. They're trying to open the veil, trying to pierce the veil. You know, Revelation tells us that, that there is an angel that's released from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit to open this portal into the abyss, into the darkness. And you just got to wonder, could CERN be that portal? If, if I tell you what, if that angel, when that angel comes down and gives that key, to see, here, here's one weird thing. Even having this conversation is they absolutely know the Bible. Right. Yes. That angel that comes down with the key, they know who that is. They also know who's in the pit themselves. Yes. That wants out. Right. Yes. Because of the word is, you know, they see us at times. So they absolutely know the spiritual part of things. Yes. Uh, we, the Christians, we're the ones that don't believe the spiritual side of things too much. Uh, not, not too much because we're just not, you know, a lot but of we don't want to know. Happen. It's because we, we don't want to know. I mean, I, the more I read about the, the bottomless pit and the more I recognize that there has to be a portal to hell and that because it talks about in Revelation that there's more demons that have to be released. There's uh, four from the River Euphrates area, okay? And that, that this one that comes out of the bottomless pit, Apollyon. So we don't want to know what's down there, but they know what's there. And and Lucifer, yeah, they, 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 got, they have to open this to release this. I'll just pause it there. We don't need to continue to listen to that part there, but let's let's move on, and I'll take and I want to play for you uh, where I speak about that as well. I did this about two months ago, and uh, let's see. I think I, I've actually already have it in the right spot. I believe. Let's see if it'll play for us. Yes, we've done that too many times. You should know. Okay, so he laid hold on the old dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Literally, it's thousands of years. So it's more than 1,000, but it doesn't specify how many. 
Now, I know that that's a stumbling block for a lot of Christians out there when I get into that right there, the translation of the word. Um, but if you would, humor me a little bit on this. Uh, this is also where we talk, about, where the scripture talks about Gog of Magog. And if you look at the book of Ezekiel, Gog and Magog is about to take place now. So if you think about it, in the book of Revelation, why would John put a Gog and Magog battle as some futuristic event that will be still another thousand years away after everything ends? Uh, why would God put us through a whole set of new trials all over again after we've already gone through the great trials uh, and we've come out and our robes are washed uh, in the blood by the blood of the Lamb and we've been made white as snow? See, it, see, it doesn't line up. That's why you have to really search and begin to try to understand the Greek words that are in there because sometimes you know the translation is where you lose the important information that you need to be aware of. So even if that's a little bit of a stumbling block, just think about it in that regard there. Uh, why would a thousand years later, Jesus is reigning on the earth and all of a sudden now we're going to go get beat up by the devil again? It doesn't make any sense. Then what was the redemption for? If you've been redeemed and, and brought back already, then why are we going back to the devil again? Why is he coming up? But if you look at it in comparison to Ezekiel, and the way Ezekiel speaks of Gog and Magog battle, then maybe everything is about to take place now. If you look at Revelation 9, the bottomless pit being opened up there, uh, well, it's interesting. If the bottomless pit is opened up in Revelation 9, what is it, two different ones? Okay, just, just a little thought to think about. Let's listen in. And he cast him into a bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. I am really of the opinion that bottomless pit is another dimension, and that seal, of course, is the ether that keeps him from crossing over, unless someone through the technology, like in the case, uh, we could say, in the case of CERN, and let me just pull that up, right? The, the Hadron Collider. Let me, let me, you see that creature right there? Somebody had sent that to me. That made me think about the... Um, uh, when Paul and uh, Mike were saying the other day about the three unclean spirits like frogs, uh, because like I said, I've, I've been told they have like a lizard like a head, similar to what a frog would look like. And even though they have like dinosaur type feet there, as you can see, uh, and this statue, this is some statue down in South America from what I understand there, uh, and very muscular, you know, like I said, you know, the scripture, when I look at the book of Joel, they, these, 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 uh, um, entities that come in they're like horses and but like a horseman in other words like a, a man that runs a guy that rides a horse he runs on his hind two legs that's the way they run and they're just monstrous in size 12 foot tall uh from what i've heard uh you know uh nine to 12 foot tall they got feet even though they're not frog feet webbed they still kind of look like a frog's foot so, you know, could that be something to think about? This, well, just, just a thought. Um, you could have something like CERN that could literally open up another dimension, could open up that spot that allows Satan to enter in. And I think that's exactly where we're headed. I think that that's exactly what they're doing. And I think that this is the way they're doing it, just like Atlantis. They're bringing in, they're bringing in Satan. They're bringing in Planet X Nibiru, which is known to be a, a draconian planet. They're bringing him right back. So, all right, let's let's take a peek back over here. Let's go back to Revelation. So they put in there for that uh, the, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. Hmm. Going to be loosed a little season. Yeah, about to be loosed right now. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. This is important right here. Very important. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. You got to remember the scripture, we, we're talking about a beast kingdom. All right. The, the devil is considered a serpent. 
Jesus said about the Pharisees that they were serpents and vipers, seed of serpent, seed of serpent. Well, <laughs> he put all the bloodshed upon them all the way back to Cain or Abel that Cain slew in the Garden of Eden. All right. Keep that all in mind. And now I'm going to talk about the thrones that are set up. It looks like a godly thing until you see what's going to happen. You know, it's interesting that one part of the verse to start with. I think generally we look at that and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. We think of that as a good thing. But then it follows with, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and the word of God, and which which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image. Maybe those thrones are what is being set up for that little season by Satan to bring about judgment against those Christians that have a testimony of Jesus. The witness of Jesus. And by the way, what is the witness of Jesus? That you believe that he's the son of God. That you consider him the divine son of God. Which, by the way, is a direct violation of Noahide laws. There you go. The seven Noahide laws in particular. Remember, and I and I, maybe on this video I spoke about this, but if not, I know I just did it recently. Jesus, when Caiaphas was judging him, he did not condemn him to death for talking about destroy this temple, I'll build it in three days. He condemned him when the question was asked, are you the son of God? Now, oddly enough, you get people like Tovia Singer and uh, some of these other r rabbi teachers and stuff. They like to make a big do out of, or no, not Tovia Singer. I shouldn't say Tovia. It was actually uh, Yitzhak Shapira that said this. He said that Israel are the sons of God. That's okay to say, right? But when it came to Jesus being the Son of God, according to the Pharisaic Caiaphasus, he had blasphemed God by saying, and he didn't say he was the Son of God, he just said, Thou sayest. And he rips his garment and says, What more do you need? You've heard his blasphemy. So for you to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, see, they, they receive the mark upon the four. Okay, watch what, 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 what happens. They're going to get beheaded because of uh, the testimony which they held, which is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. What is the witness of Jesus? That he is the Son of God. So if Jesus just said to Caiaphas, thou sayest, when he talks about the issue about being the Son of God, and then you hold that testimony as the Son of, that Jesus is the Son of God, then guess what? You're guilty of blasphemy. The same Pharisees then are the same Pharisees today. They ain't changed their opinion one bit. You don't think that they're not going to behead you? The only thing holding them back, and it's interesting, Mike kind of hints to that, but he doesn't, even Mike is, that's the only problem I have with Mike. Mike is still, he still holds that Zionist view there, and he doesn't realize who's controlling Israel. The true Israel are those Jews that are living in the land there that believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Even the Palestinian Christians, they're more true Israelites because a lot of them, 50% Palestinian are crypto Jews. You don't know that? I mean, when they came to the land of Israel, uh, the, the, the first prime minister of Israel, etc., all knew that 50% of them were crypto Jews. They were trying to convert them to Judaism. But they, they didn't want Judaism. They wanted to still be believers in Jesus. And I'm not saying whether they were Catholic or whatever. I'm not promoting one denominational view over the other. This, not, this has nothing to do with that. It's the fact is, a lot of them were believers already. They didn't need a conversion to Judaism. That's why I say support Israel, sure. Even Jewish people that don't recognize Jesus to be the Messiah, don't be against them, absolutely not. Pray for them that their eyes will come open. My gosh, absolutely. But when you're supporting the government of Israel, and, 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 there's, and not everybody in the government is a bad guy either, 
You know, those ones that are trying to stand up against Netanyahu and his right-wing extremist government that he's created over there, that's they're actually better than the ones on the right there. Because why? At least they believe in freedom of religion over there in this country. To some degree, not all of them, but to some degree they do. But they're going to wait until everything falls into a calamity and you can do nothing about it. When America is brought to her knees, that's when they're going to force the Noahide laws. Watch what people like DeSantis and them are doing. Just watch. That's where it's coming to, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. Listen, thank you for listening. I want to thank you as patrons that support this broadcast. Your contribution, regardless, you can be as simple as a dollar a month. You're the ones that really help us. We appreciate that. Uh, there are some of you that, that you still support us directly. Um, you know, besides that, you give to the ministry. Uh, and I want to thank you for that as well. Um, Israelinewslive.org, for those of you that don't know. Normally above my head, you can see, see the website. You can see the way to donate by mail. Uh, Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee 37872. It's also right here online. If you want to donate to where it comes to us quicker, uh, you can do that just by clicking right there, donate online, and, and uh, that happens as well. If you do it by mail, 100% goes to us. Uh, PayPal always gets a, a percentage regardless, but either way is okay. We thank you for it. Your kindness and your love makes all the difference in the world, and God always knows what our need is. And we can see that in your giving as well, uh, because sometimes there's a need that we just don't even speak about, but by God's grace, it's always there. Um, and, uh, and I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, and, and I just want to mention as well, there was a brother, uh, Brother Bill, I'll just say that, who, and several of you helped me to raise the money for uh, dealing with the surgery for my back. Uh, I still have that. Uh, and I have, I have prolonged doing it. And I, have to, I just want to share with you why. Uh, of course, I ended up getting a little bit worse off in the meantime, but that's okay. I still, the, your gifts have been set aside for that purpose. And I want to make sure that I update you and tell you that. And, you know, I was only giving a 33% chance that the surgery will be successful. Um, that does concern me, uh, but I also realize that I'm getting to the point where I, I'm going to have to take that chance regardless. Uh, I don't feel the left leg very much anymore. So uh, so do pray for me. And, you know, I am wanting to get a second opinion. I have a, a doctor in Europe uh, who is my, he's a surgeon. He's actually the surgeon. And I would actually rather use him because it'd be less expensive. But uh, I'm going to have to probably end up going to see him. And because uh, I got some business to tend to regarding my father-in-law and his passing that has to be taken care of in Europe. So I think what I'll do is when I get there, I will get his opinion, have him look at the MRI results. They're very bad. They're not good. Um, and, uh, and to see where we go there. So I just wanted to let you know, though, because there were several of you that really helped out. Uh, and I did set all that aside for that purpose. And I just want to thank you for that personally. And, um, and also, too, back again, sending letters out, a thank you to people that support the work we do here. Uh, I don't mention it very often, but I'm actually going to the EMP Shield headquarters there. Uh, so I'll just mention to you guys as well. Uh, I think it is an important investment you could make uh, in your own life there. And there, from what I understand, there's new things that are coming out that uh, we want to go. And we actually are going to be meeting with one of the European engineers. And uh, so uh, I just, uh, that's actually one of the new devices, in fact, right there, the MP Micro Shield. I think this is for, yeah, motorcycles, uh, ATVs, things like that. Um, it's 78% smaller than the, the original EMP Shield. Um, and so, but just so you remember, when you go to purchase this, they got a discount on there because it's new. It's actually 509 But when you add that to your cart, if that's something you choose that you need, uh, for whatever you need, don't forget the INL50 code. All right, and I'll blow that up for you guys so you can see that on the screen a little bit better. INL50 code is very, very important. If you don't put that INL50 code in there, right there, 
then they won't they won't give you that fifty dollar discount. That's what it stands for. Israeli News Live fifty, and then you apply that coupon. And no matter how many devices you need, whatever you buy, they're going to knock fifty dollars more off of that. Just like you can see there, it dropped down to three ninety nine. You can proceed to the checkouts. So like I said, if you buy three items, that's going to be one hundred and fifty dollars off. So. Uh, and they also, uh, it's the only device that we actually uh, talk about here from time to time. And I don't like to indenate people with a bunch of sales stuff. I'm not into that. I believe in the device or I wouldn't speak about it. And so therefore, on, on this issue here, uh, I've always said I really feel like that the one for the vehicle is the most important. Because if there is an EMP strike in this nation, we're definitely under threat of war in this nation. EMP is definitely going to be an option that the Chinese may use then your loved one being away from home when that happens and not being able to drive home, that would be a major issue for me. Uh, so I'm sure it is for you as well. So I've always really encouraged the vehicle one. Uh, I think the house one is also important um, to put one on your home as well. Even lightning strikes. I mean, these things are amazing. It's one of the best things you could get for lightning strikes. And so we're going we're gonna to talk to the engineers this week and uh, update you guys a little bit more about that. But I thought I would just share that information with you once again. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live here on our Patreon channel. We'll probably end up making this video public as well uh, very soon because some of the things I spoke about I feel like is important for everyone to know. But uh, you, our patrons, are the first ones to hear this, and I hope it's a blessing for you. God bless you, and thank you for listening.